everyone, it's Sevi. Sayu is generally a character that's not on anyone's top tier choices and has not particularly found a meta niche. More often, she's treated as a cheaper substitute gene. That being said, she's still a useful unit that can consolidate a healer VV role and who has fun, unique, quirky mechanics to try. As such, I didn't want to sleep on her since Sayu already does a lot of that and I wanted to make this guide to give our rolling ninja more attention. We'll cover Sayu's talents, gameplay tips, constellations, best artifact builds, best weapons, and team comps. And if you haven't subscribed yet, doing so will help me a lot in making more Genshin guides. Now let's get started. First, let's understand how her kit and talents work. To get it out of the way, Sayu's normal and charged attacks aren't really useful and shouldn't be invested in, even boasting one of the lowest multipliers among Claymore users. Her true utility is in her skill and burst. Sayu's skill is an odd ability, though it can have fun uses. Tapping it makes Sayu do a quick kick to deal an instance of animo damage and generate two particles. Holding the skill makes Sayu enter into her wind wheel state, turning into a ball that rolls rapidly around the field with a high resistance to interruption. While she's rolling, she deals continuous animo damage to enemies she comes into contact with and will neither consume nor gain stamina. You can tap to end it early or wait for 10 seconds for it to end. Either way, Sayu will do a kick to deal a final instance of animo damage and swirl if possible. This rolling ability enables what we'll refer to as a roll build, which essentially uses most of her hold skill duration to turn her into a taxi that can carry other teammates off field abilities, particularly Shangling and Kaya's bursts, while she swirls and damages from her rolls. Let me go through some important notes on the hold skill if you plan to use this more. First, it's snapshots, which is important if you're using her with attack buffs like Bennett's. Next, one particle can only be generated every 3 seconds as long as you hit enemies, then the final kick will create another 2 particles. Then, this skill can trigger an elemental absorption, so that Sayu not only deals animal damage during her rolls, but she also deals added elemental damage. If there are multiple elements she's in contact with, the priority of absorption is pyro, hydro, electro, cryo, which is standard for most animal users. A very reliable way to absorb an element is to roll while Sayu herself is affected by an elemental aura. For example, rolling while standing on Bennett's circle, which applies pyro, is a guaranteed way to absorb pyro. Next, this skill follows standard ICD for elemental application and swirl, so you can only swirl as often as her ICD allows, which is why you'll notice even when rolling and hitting an enemy continuously, there's a cooldown before it swirls again. But the kick has a separate ICD from the rolls. Lastly, her wind wheel state can be manually cancelled by dashing, jumping, or switching out, in which case she won't do her final kick, which would be a wasted opportunity as you want to generate energy particles. As such, I generally recommend that you still tap the skill for a premature exit. Ultimately, if you're concerned about field time and rotations, especially if you're using a healer Sayu, the hold skill is almost always an inefficient way to use your time as it consumes a lot of field time and the damage payoff isn't that worth it. You'd rather want to just keep rotating your team's abilities rather than staying in Sayu's wind wheel state. One scenario it could prove worth it is if you're trying to break enemy shields via swirling elements or using the elemental absorption, but those are rare scenarios. For the most efficient skill combo, I would recommend holding the skill just quickly enough to roll and hit one enemy to generate one particle, then quickly exiting by tapping to kick the enemy, thereby generating two additional particles. This at least generates three particles total for Sayu to catch, rather than simply tapping the skill for two particles. But aside from battle uses, her rolling is really helpful for quickly traversing the open world, and you can create ice bridges by infusing her with cryo and rolling on water. Finally, her burst is where her main healing and off-field utility comes from. Casting it deals animal damage and heals your team. It has a high AD energy cost and the healing amount scales on Sayu's attack stat until C5. It then summons a Daruma, which has a conditional effect of either healing an active character or dealing damage to an enemy. If you or a co-op player's active character is less than 70% HP, the unit with the lowest HP will be healed. 
If the active character is above 70%, then it will target an opponent to deal animo damage and it can only swirl every other hit due to ICD. However, these conditions quickly become irrelevant due to her first constellation anyway. If there are no opponents around, it'll just heal your units regardless if they're above 70% HP. Sayu's second passive talent improves her Daruma by adding an AoE effect wherein its healing also heals in an AoE for 20% of the healed HP. Then it also increases the AoE of your animo damage which can help trigger more swirls. For her last two talents, Sayu's first passive talent lets you do additional full team healing when you trigger swirl reactions which is also boosted by her EM stat. It's a small amount but at least it's more healing. And she has a world exploration talent that lets you get close to certain wildlife without startling them. Perfect for setting up your crystal fly catching spree. Perhaps the most notable absence in her kit is having no crowd control utility. Save for Xiao, all other animo supports have CC mechanics. So before building Sayu, just know that you'll rely on her swirling, damage, and healing capabilities. In a way, you can look at Sayu as a mini Jean, who also consolidates the support role of animo 4-piece viridescent venerer user and team healer. We'll discuss more about how to best maximize her support utility as we go along. For Sayu's talent priority, you should focus on her burst since it's her main team utility. Then at least level 6 her skill and just add more from personal preference and if you find yourself using it often enough, then you can leave her normal attack talent alone. Let's now take a look at what her constellations provide as some are quite helpful to make using and building her easier. C1 removes her burst's HP conditions so it can deal damage and heal simultaneously, which makes her burst utility so much better already. While it feels like this should have been part of her kit from the start, at least it's her first constellation. A highly recommended constellation to have. C2 increases the damage of her kick the longer you stay in her wind wheel state. If you are playing Sayu for her rolling playstyle, then it's an okay damage boost. But if you're using her as a healer support role, it's more efficient to not consume too much field time with Sayu's role, meaning this will be underutilized. C3 increases her burst talent level, a nice boost to her off-field support role. C4 gives Sayu energy whenever she triggers a swirl with a cooldown of 2 seconds. As long as you're conscious of proccing swirls with her kit, this can be a helpful constellation for cutting down Sayu's ER requirement. It gives her more flexibility with her stat distribution and weapon choices too. C5 increases her skill talent level. And finally, C6 makes her Daruma get additional damage and heal scaling based on her elemental mastery. Though the bonuses have a limit, it would technically require 2000 EM to hit it. There's at least more reason to go for a full EM build on Sayu as EM will now improve all aspects of her utility. Swirl damage, animo damage, and healing. However, if you already use a build that isn't necessarily full EM, then that's okay even with C6 and you can just treat this constellation as a nice bonus for whatever EM stat you have. Moving on to Sayu's artifacts, your options are very straightforward. Like other animo supports, Sayu wants a 4-piece Viridescent Venerer set for shredding elemental resistance. This consolidates the role of VV shredding and healing similar to Jean. There are, of course, cheaper artifact combos for Sayu. You can put on 2-piece artifacts with ER, attack, and healing bonus effects. If you're not farming artifacts yet, you can put on the 4-star ER artifacts or even a full instructor set. However, the ultimate goal to make Sayu the best support is simply a 4-piece Viridescent Venerer. So the next question is, how do you build her stats? For C0 to C5 Sayu, her healing and damage will scale more from attack than EM, but the difference between either a full attack or EM build is negligible in practice if she's your support anyway. The priority is to first equip a full VV set and meet her ER requirements to properly support your team. At least 200% ER is a safe target due to her high burst cost, low particle generation, and lack of batteries. This can still change depending if you have more or less energy sources. Adjust according to your gameplay experience. This could also be lower if you're using her more for rolling than healing. 
Her goblet and sands main stats can either be attack or EM, but her sands can also be an ER sands if you're not getting enough ER from her weapon or substats. If you want a full healer build, giving her a healing bonus circlet will maximize that, but attack or EM are fine too. While you can build her for more DPS, like by putting on a crit circlet, aiming for a good crit ratio, and really min-maxing DPS substats, those would require much more luck and resin investment that's better spent on your actual DPSs. So to make Sayu already functional, just farm the right set and main stats first. Now if you have C6 Sayu, then there's now more incentive to go for a full EM build as it improves her swirl damage while simultaneously scaling her damage and healing. This is also the build you should go for if you want Sayu to be your rolling, swirling, pyronado carrier. But if you already have a good attack set, don't feel pressured to have to switch to a full EM build. And of course, you should still remember to first address her ER needs. For substats, you want to get ER, EM, and attack stats on either build. If you're using a Favonius Greatsword, then getting some crit rate would be good too. As for Sayu's weapons, you can go for an attack, EM, or ER weapon. I would personally prioritize an ER weapon as Sayu's burst uptime is important for her team utility, so let's start with those options. The free-to-play Inazuma Claymore is already a very solid choice as it provides a lot of ER and adds an energy refunding mechanic too. If you want the easiest choice and don't have other available Claymores, then crafting even just an R1 of this will do the job. An upgrade over this would be the Favonius Greatsword. You just need to build crit rate to reliably proc its particle generation effect, but it's significantly better than the Inazuma Claymore since those particles will benefit the entire team's energy, and it provides much more ER for Sayu. I'd choose this over the Sacrificial Greatsword since using Sayu's skill twice in a row will consume too much field time versus Favonius Greatsword's passive, and the Sack Sword only gives half of Favonius's ER stat. Then for the 5-star option, there's only the Skyward Pride, which gives a lot of base attack for Sayu's talents to scale from. However, the ER it gives is lower versus the best 4-star options, so if you're going with this, just be sure to have enough ER stats from artifacts. If you choose to run a healer Sayu with an EM or attack weapon, it'll be much harder to meet her ER requirements from artifact stats so they're generally not recommended. But for a roll build Sayu, an attack or EM weapon will be okay. For the EM weapons, you only have two choices, the Blood Tainted Greatsword and the Rain Slasher. The Blood Tainted Greatsword is a decent cheap option if used on a pyro team. If you have Rain Slasher refines, it's also an okay option with an Electro Charge team. For attack weapons, you have a lot of options from the free-to-play craftable Prototype Archaic all the way to the 5-star Wolf's Gravestone. I won't list them all anymore. Just put on the best spare attack weapon you have that isn't needed by actual DPS units. When it comes to teams, she's currently in a state wherein she is flexible enough to slot in most teams that benefit from having the role consolidated animo unit. In general, Sayu can slot in your usual reaction teams, Taser, Freeze, Vape, Melt, and Overload. However, she won't be the best in slot animo unit for them. Refer on screen to the team templates to form your own team. Sayu's support kit is limited and she lacks any crowd control capabilities, which can make other animal supports be a generally better choice if you have them. But at the very least, she gives team survivability, especially if you don't have a gene, then Sayu fills in that healer animal support role. For the Sayu role build, she has a staple team that puts her wind wheel state to good use, consisting of Sayu, Shengling, Bennett, and a flex slot. The idea is that since Sayu's roll snapshots too, you will also activate it on top of Bennett's buff, and Sayu rolls around while bringing the pyro nado all the while swirling pyro to reduce enemy resistance and deal her own damage. One particular technique is to roll counterclockwise to Pyronado's direction to increase the number of hits it achieves on enemies. Of course, there are better teams to use Bennett and Shengling with, so this is just a fun recommendation, not a meta one. For the flex slot, you can add a cryo like Kaya or Rosaria for a melt team. 
especially since Kaya's burst can also be carried by Sayu. Another option could be adding Mona, who can hold a Thrilling Tales weapon and tenacity set to give Shangling more attack buffs. Lastly, Fischl, who can do overloads and give energy particles to the team, so it's not as recommended. Alternatively, Sayu can slot in teams that don't need a VV Shredder, like physical or geo teams, if only for the purpose of having a healer. In that case, her artifact choice doesn't have to be VV. One more note is that Sayu cannot be used as a real replacement for a Jean Sunfire comp. This is because Sayu does not have the same mechanic as Jean's burst, which continuously applies Animo on the active character standing on top of Bennett to swirl. But that's going to be all for this full Sayu guide. If you're a regular Sayu player or even a Sayu main, I'd love to know how you like playing and building her best. Tell me down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!